Good morning guys and girls, good morning internet, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at. Um, today we are looking at this artwork called Ramen, which I did for the Krita Facebook group uh, way back in the day. Wow, this feels like an eternity already. Um, but yeah, I did this, uh, I want to say 2019, uh, maybe early part of 2020. Um, but yeah, uh, so <laughs> the prompt for that particular week that I did this uh, artwork was ramen. And um, the funny thing is, and the interesting part <laughs> about the illustration is that ramen <laughs> is not very obvious in this particular illustration um you had to look closely in order to decipher that there's a ramen involved in this in this illustration in the first place uh, but yeah um i really dig this illustration though i i really um thought that uh my illustration was simple but very very effective you know uh very simple layout, very simple compositions. Uh, the colors are a little tricky. Uh, again, I'm still trying to uh, refine my coloring techniques and whatnot. Uh, but overall, like composition wise, it's just, it just, it feels like a very well composed photo. Uh, so yeah. Um, so obviously my inspiration um, in this particular illustration was uh, food stalls. Uh, clearly there's a food stall that I'm trying to draw in front of us right now. Uh, trying to draw out the shades. Well, well, actually right now, let me take it back. Right now I'm setting up uh, vanishing points is what I'm trying to do. Um, uh, okay, I was about to say <laughs> that that last vanishing point didn't line up very nicely and um, I obviously fixed it obviously uh, so yeah um, but yeah food stalls was my inspiration for for what I wanted to draw um, and there's the guy eating ramen in case people didn't catch that at the very beginning of the video where there's a title card with the photo um, so the illustration just pretty much signifies two guys uh, who is looking at a hot girl because <laughs> you know us old guys we yeah hmm <laughs> what can we say we appreciate youthful beauty so uh yeah but anyways the punchline that i was trying to intend was um i really wanted to draw this uh facial expression in a guy you know that's like so surprised at something that he saw that he just like mid pause, you know, stop from eating. Um, and so that's essentially what I wanted to portray. But obviously that kind of got dialed down in the whole uh, illustration because uh, the distraction, uh, which in this case, what was distracting the guy was a pretty girl, obviously. Um the pretty girl just pretty much took center stage in the illustration um which is fine you know i mean i think composition wise it was good the way i placed everything was pretty uh very well structured um so yeah but yeah so in the end uh my comical attempt at portraying this uh guy from um, pausing from eating his ramen because he's just so surprised at what he saw it just didn't really came to fruition because uh the girl obviously just took center stage but it's all good you know because i mean i still ended up with a very um nice illustration uh the funny thing though is that it really wasn't obvious what where the ramen was um when i posted it on the creative facebook group <laughs> Sonia was like, where's Sonia Bennett, a very great artist. I uh, do check her art out. Um, she was a one, she was a moderator, a admin moderator who posted 
the prompt for that week and she <laughs> asked where the where was the ramen and i pointed it out and she was like oh i thought it was the guy's beard or something so it wasn't very clear so i had to fix it eventually where i had to come back and we do the artwork just to fix things up a little bit i don't know if it's more obvious that there's ramen involved <laughs> in this whole photo anymore but at this point i'm just keeping the title as is and if people don't see the ramen i am okay with it because i think the general gist and idea of the illustration has remained intact so yeah we're just gonna go with that but yeah um but yeah i i just really like the simplicity of it um there's a lot of negative space i mean clearly i just finished the outline sketch um of everything um and as you can see there's quite a lot of negative space and i think that's the reason why i really like this photo is because uh, there's a huge contrast between the busy details versus just like plain um canvas or plain colors in this particular case um the skies just you know plain colors and then obviously the ground uh which has like a lot of space in it is I mean, it just creates a lot of negative space. So it's a really good contrast. And I think that's the reason why it's a very balanced um, illustration. Um, I got the comment uh, on the illustration that is very, very uh, Edward Hopper in feel. And oh no, I am so forgetting this artist's name. I have to look it up. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Edward Hopper. Um, the guy who did Nighthawks... Uh, and it's funny because I remember the title of the painting, which I never know. Um, I typically don't know uh, titles. I typically know artist names. But yep, Nighthawks is done by Edward Hopper. And it is part of the Art Institute of Chicago's collection. Um, but yeah, I got the commentary on this being very much Edward Hopper, not Hawks feel, and it is true. Um, and I love that artwork uh, by Edward Hopper. Um, uh, I think it's a very well done painting. So yeah, it, and you know, just out of curiosity, because I, I don't actually really know this, um, I'm trying to figure out what Edward Hopper's genre is, because that particular genre is just very interesting. Um, I know he was early 19th century, but I don't, but he's not really exactly post-impressionist. Um, wow, yeah, he's considered impressionism, but he's like way after, or a realist painter. Um, yeah, was an American realist painter and printmaker. But I love the guy. You have to check him out. Uh, for people who don't know a whole lot about art history, uh, I do encourage you guys to look up art history. It's a um, very great resource for your art uh, adventures and whatnot. You can learn a lot of things just from looking up old artists and doing master studies and whatnot. Edward Hopper, I was like, one, is one of the uh, more familiar artists I have. Um, like he was one of the few artists that I learned from college versus like all the other artists that I learned uh, towards other later towards the later part of my life. For example, like uh, Adolfo Bogero. Like I didn't even really know him until I was well three years ago. I'd say thirty seven. I was familiar with his paintings and whatnot, but I, I didn't really recognize his name until like later. But like a lot of the French classical artists, like Theodorus Rally and. Um, um, America Sot is not really French classical. He's in, she's impressionism. Um, but yeah, I most of them I didn't know. But Edward Hopper is just one of those artists that I've known ever since uh, college. So, um, yeah, I love him. Do do check him out. And I could kind of see the relation of Nighthawks being compared to this particular painting. I mean, they're both exhibit some form of dining establishment in this case this one's uh you know um a food stall uh and then in nighthawks is clearly a cafe of some sort like a late night cafe so um so yeah but um now that i've discussed some uh art theories and art history and 
where the idea of this illustration came from. I guess uh, now it's a uh, great time to review some of the art process. And again, some of the art process is just pretty much my standard way of doing things. It's uh, rinse and repeat. So um, it does bear repeating. Uh, might as well just repeat it just for uh, lesson's sake and whatnot. But obviously, um, at the very beginning, what I did differently was I set up vanishing points. So I have multiple different approaches when I'm trying to set up a scene. I either do 3D, which I love doing like a one hour 3D mock up of the scene, lighting it up and having all my perspective issues and lighting issues just knocked out. I mean, I love doing 3D. Um, but sometimes I take a much simpler approach and a much more traditional approach, which is what I did in this one. I set up vanishing points. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, you saw me do that earlier. Um, so as soon as I set up the vanishing points, I did my line sketch. Um, it used to be that I wasn't really doing line sketches before. I was just doing this whole speed painting, carving out shapes and whatnot, just, you know, plotting out like a blot of colors and just carving things out but I realized that a good line sketch really does help so I brought back that old skill and kind of refine it some more um obviously in, in this particular case I really wasn't um particular on having like a really really nice clean sketch that's very rare that I do that uh where I do a really nice uh line sketch most of the time it's all rough, uh, which is what the case was on this one. Um, the other thing that I did, which I used to do, which I don't need anymore, is that I always start out small. And this is actually a great technique, especially if you're doing thumbnails, uh, if you're thumbnailing. Um, you start out with a small, small resolution, which prevents you from uh, over detailing and that's what i did uh initially it was like 200 pixels of some sort i didn't realize it was really that low like i recognized that that it was low resolution but i thought it was like under 500 or around 500 pixels but yeah it was a lot lower than i thought i was like whoa that's really low um but yeah um so i uh Sorry, I got distracted with what I'm drawing in the background. It's kind of cool when how I'm doing all the shadows. Or not shadows, but the shadow people in the background. Very interesting to look at. Okay, but going back to what I was saying. Um, so I did my line sketch and whatnot, and I have a lower resolution. I up the resolution i'm not sure if i've upped the resolution yet or whatnot uh, it still feels like this is fairly low resolution so uh, eventually i'll you know bump up the resolution and a higher resolution later on but after the sketch after the line sketch i did this two-tone thing that i used to do where basically i have like one very dark color i lay it down first it's my base paint and then i pick out the light areas so I always use to separate my illustration into the dark and light. And then um, I would lay down some colors um, using my random mech brush uh, with a hue variation set on it uh, just to vary up my hues a little bit. And then basically it's like a soup of color is what I do. You know, I do this fast, I do this quick. Um, when I lay down my colors, the main thing that I really focus on is more value. Uh, like having a good range of darks and having a good uh, range of lights. And then as soon as I have all this super color, I merge them all in one layer, which I love hitting in one layer. Uh, I know this is contradictory to standard practice, standard industry practice. It's always advisable if you're working in the industry. Um, and industry i'm referring to the concept art industry if you're working in the concept art industry or illustration industry it's always advisable to work in multiple layers because uh, it's non-destructive but there is an ease that comes along with painting in one layer um, it honestly feels like you're painting like a regular canvas and whatnot so 
but yeah i merge everything in one layer and i just paint everything in one layer and yeah i just go into town <laughs> go crazy uh with that one layer uh detailing this soup of color and whatnot and my detailing process is pretty simple um so basically like right now everything's kind of fuzzy everything's kind of messy so what i do to just slowly um detail this scene out is that i basically delineate my edges which i kind of makes my edges sharper which is what you see me do right now with the food stall um um which is this is a unique way for me to delineate my edges because typically i just you know hand draw it but i was using the marquee selection for this particular one but yeah so i delineate my edges make my edges sharper so that the shapes re clear um and then I accentuate my shadows, which means if the shadows are not too dark and I feel it needs a little darkening, then I darken it up. And then I add highlights. And obviously the highlights are very, very uh, minuscule and far and few between. Like you don't want to overdo highlights because then it just looks too weird. <laughs> everything would just look like it's super wet if you add highlights and everything. So obviously you just kind of have to be careful with highlights. But yeah, it's a rinse and repeat process. I, you know, go through each and every single part of the um, illustration and whatnot. Uh, and so, yeah. And then sometimes, um, as in the case of what's going on right now, uh, this is pretty unique because half the time I just do my straight detailing process, that three-step process over and over again. Sometimes though, I do a little bit more refining um, on some details, such as the case as this one. This one, I obviously didn't really detail the characters originally, so I have to redraw a line sketch, which is just what I just did just now i drew the guy eating ramen obviously and then i'm eating the sh i'm eating the chef I'm <laughs> wow <laughs> what was that i'm drawing the chef obviously um so yeah and then i i'll do the same thing again with the girl and then obviously i'll do the colors again and then uh do the blending action where i put them all in one layer and just kind of blend them into recognizable shapes and then i start detailing so yeah um so that's pretty much what's going to be happening with the process. I uh, just enjoyed the show for a little while and I'll come back and talk some more about this piece. <music>
Okay, so for the most part, uh, practically everything has been detailed um, in the environment and then the only thing left that I needed to do was obviously the characters. Um, I obviously uh, did the whole smudging action, blending action at the very last minute with, for the characters. Um, I did a quick coloring obviously and then um, I... Uh, kept the outline for as long as I can just to make sure that I don't um, paint over them uh, paint over certain areas basically and so now I've merged that line sketch together with the quick coloring thing that I did and then just kind of blending things around just to get some form of blending action and then I am obviously gonna start detailing them uh, the characters which is pretty much the last segments of this illustration that I really needed to work on um, and again I like I said the whole detailing process is pretty much rinse and repeat I said to not in such a way I delineate my edges make my shapes really clear uh, and I accentuate the shadows and add highlights uh, rinse and repeat so I'm obviously going to start with the two guys in the back because they're minor and they're quick to do and then obviously I'm going to concentrate on the girl at the very last a little pieces of advice where uh, it's always important to like uh, work on your focal point um, for the most part. Um, so technically, I should have worked on the girl uh, first, and then worked on the background, and then go back at the girl and refine her some more. But in this in this particular case, it it really wasn't all that bad because even though the girl is the focal point she does not dominate the piece i mean she's literally like one fifth of the canvas now if she takes up say half of the canvas to two thirds of the canvas then yeah i would obviously work on her a little more but really she's like less than one fifth of the canvas as you can see um and really what draws uh the eyes viewer the viewers eyes towards her is just because of all that empty space at the very bottom uh, where all that ground is so yeah but yeah I'm obviously working on the guys first and then I'll eventually work on the girl um, and then at some point in this video I'll come back and fix this guy up because uh, as you can see I'm making his face longer so the chopsticks that's holding the ramen is pretty much right where his chin would be. And so that's why people thought that it kind of looked like uh, a beard instead of ramen noodles. So uh, I eventually had to fix all that, obviously, and I did uh, later on. And so, yeah. But again, like I said, I, I love this illustration. I you know, I take back what my earlier statement was because I was kind of leery of the colors and I wasn't very too happy and so I kind of made a comment about it. But in hindsight, I do actually like the colors. I, I love the color scheme. The only thing that I think that is a little off on this is the, is the use of the yellow. Like if I had kept it predominantly red, purplish pink and blue I think that would have been much much more harmonious because that's a very much a synchronous uh, a synchronous uh, color palette um, so I think that that would have made it interesting um, but yeah I think the addition of the yellow uh, might have thrown it off a little bit and maybe that's what I don't particularly like in this illustrations color schemes i mean i'm not really sure um maybe this is just one of those things where i kind of have to think about it some more um after not looking at it for another year or two um 
But yeah, I mean, aside from that particular uh, commentary about the color, everything else I do love. I, I love the girl's pose uh, and her demeanor and how I drew her. I I really like um, the chef. Um, I don't know why, but I don't draw bald guys that that much you know and so like drawing that bald guy and giving him glasses kind of gave him character like uh yeah so that was kind of like unexpected you know so i, I like how i did the the chef i thought the chef was very well done uh the girl the girl's all right you know like i mean drawing her and like her and sketching her out what i think that's interesting about the girl is her pose obviously she's checking her phone out and whatnot and she doesn't even realize that she's being checked out by these two guys just because she was so busy in the phone and she was just like oh i'm distracted just as much as like the two other guys are distracted looking at her right so um so really that's what is interesting about the girl and what I find interesting about the girl is that she has this unusual pose that I typically don't draw, you know. Uh, typically when I draw my females, I have to have them sexy, just like everyone else. <laughs> so, um, actually that's not necessarily true. Um, I'm very much um, a romantic painter. Uh, and just another art history tidbit, romanticism. Everyone thinks that romanticism has something to do with love. That's actually not true. The romantic genre of painting, um, basically what it is, is that they romanticize uh, normal everyday stuff. So like, for example, um, the farmers. Uh, farmers are such a great subject back in the day, especially during the romantic period. Uh, when the artists would paint them, they make it look like they're having like such a great time farming <laughs> when the farmers are just like, dude, we're just farming. Like this isn't a big deal. But basically that's what romanticism is because before the romantic period, what everyone used to paint was just like religious stuff and novelty, right? Um, oh, nobility, like royalty and noble people. Um, no one ever really drew the common people and so when the romantic period came and they started drawing uh, common people that's what was considered romanticism because they romanticized the everyday peasant um, so yeah if I have to peg myself as uh, in a genre I would have to say I am very much a romanticist slash realist painter uh, which is what this case is in here I'm trying to draw this humorous scene of like a guy who's gawking at a girl who is checking out her phone. So, um, which isn't very obvious, obviously, because he's just so, such a small part in the painting. You don't even really see him. But yeah. But yeah, this illustration is almost done. I am so glad you guys got the chance to watch this with me and talk to me. Or, well, I'm not talk to me, but me talk to you. Uh, giving me the chance to, for me to talk to you about the art process and some of my thoughts on it and some of the successes and whatnot. So yeah, the, the colors are great, like I said, um, except for the yellow, which I think might be problematic. I could be wrong on that too, though. Like I might, you know, do an experiment and change the color yellow to something that's more synchronous with uh, the colors that are already there, then it still turns out to be horrible. So I don't know. But as of this moment i am just gonna leave this painting as is and just let it be um because i think this is a fairly successful painting even with all the nuances that that i had pointed out as failures and whatnot so yeah but yeah here's my edward hopper uh wannabe painting <laughs> And do check out Edward Hopper. He's such a great artist. So, yeah. Check out Nighthawks. One of my favorite paintings. So, yeah. I'm checking the painting out. Adding a few more highlights. And merging them all in one layer. Doing the last few checks. And that's it. It's done. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.